Welcome back everyone. I'm going to share uh, Adam's parachute with you today. It's probably one of the oldest and best known parachute imitations or parachute flies which is a mayfly imitation and a pretty easy fly to tie. Um, most of the parachute flies you know, like the light kale, parachute kales, the, the parachute BWOs, those flies are tied in exactly the same tying sequence as the parachute atoms. And it's a, uh, um, if, you, if you can tie the parachute atoms, you can pretty much tie any of those flies. The important thing is to get that parachute right, to get that tackle, tie that right. Now the parachute atoms is normally tied with a dubbing abdomen, but I'm going to change that to a goose bite abdomen. And most of the most of the flies, if you tie other parachute flies like the the parachute kale and those, they they are exactly the same as the um, parachute atoms. The only difference is the the color of the material, the size of the of the hook maybe and and then here and there a minor change in the in, in the materials itself but um, other than that it's a pretty standard uh, pattern now you start by tying a tail with brown and grizzly hackle uh, and it's a it's a bit of a mix of the two. You select a brown hackle and grab a few fibers from that, about six. I I, I tie about six brown and six grizzly. And you just take that and crap that on the hook. Just keep that there for a for a moment. And then you select a few, as, 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 uh, you select a grizzly feather and grab a few of those fibers from the, from a grizzly feather. And you just, also about six. Now, the important thing with tail is that you tie it in Put that on top there, take take it all off, and there you have a nice little tail. Uh, the important thing with this is that you tie it in straight. You, you, you wrap almost to the point of the hook, you cover the hook shank. And then your next wrap, you just trap the tail in the in that wrap and carry on backwards with about three or four more wraps and that will get a nice straight tail. Don't tie um, tie down any further because you will find that the tail starts to point down. You don't want that. You want the tail to be in line with the hook shank and then you wrap forward and you trap that material. If you use longer fibers you may have to cut it a little bit shorter but don't cut that any shorter. You want that as a filler so that your abdomen um, so that you've got a, 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 a even surface to tie the abdomen on, or the, the abdomen material, in this case the goose bite. Now I'm using a um, grip micro thread, it's grey, uh, which is kind of the colour for uh, Adams, or Adams parachute. And I'm dying it on a grip 11001 size 16, which is a standard dry fly hook. And the proportions is very important in this fly. Um, and the, the tying sequence varies from tire to tire. I personally prefer to, to, to um, tie the post at this point, where I've seen many guys finish the abdomen and then they come back and tie the post. And the reason why I like why I prefer to tie the post is 
it helps me with proportions in the fly to make sure that 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 all my proportions are right and it's it's sort of a reference point now for the post in this fly i'm going to use a just a normal white antron yarn there are many different yarns that you can use there's poly yarn and, and floating antron yarns and, and all sorts of stuff the original was tied with calf tail with a calf tail post but um, it tends to bulk up the abdomen side of the of the fly but because you have to tie it along the the, the, the hook shank where with a poly yarn or the, or the synthetic yarn it's a very consistent material so all we do is you take about an inch of Antron yarn, fold that around the hook. First, get your thread in place. You want to tie the post around there. So you get your get that in place. Then you fold the poly yarn around the thread. Let the bobbin hang. Fold that around the thread. Bring the thread up. Slide the the antron down and trap it with about two wraps of thread and you pull it so that it's perpendicular to the hook shank and you make another two wraps in the other direction crossing over to keep it in that position so you're gonna have that sort of sort of finish which is almost like spinner wings and you make sure the thread is on the hook bend side of the of the uh, um, antron yarn. Next step is to fold, to grab both those between your thumb and forefinger, pull them up and make a wrap around the base. And then a little bit higher, make another wrap. And you want to tie those down together. And just make a few few wraps two or three to start with just to keep that in position there and then you go back down and you finish behind the the post again now i've got a post that's standing upright and we're going to do the the, the uh, abdomen now the abdomen i'm tying it with a with a goose pie this is actually from egyptian um, I'm a wing shooter, so I always harvest some feathers. They've got beautiful CDC. Um, and you tie that along the uh, hook shank all the way to the base of the tail. And those are our local hardy does. And you tie that along the base of the tail. Now, the the goose bites from the from 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 these birds are the Egyptian geese and and many of the other uh, larger geese species are quite long, and it's the perfect color for for um, for Adams. It's a it's got black edges with a kind of a blue dun darkish gray um, center part. And that will form a very nice segmented um, abdomen on the on the fly. Now I do I did make a video on how to prepare goose bites, and it will it depends on whether you left or right-handed and which side of the feather you, you pick. Now, I'm a right-handed tire, so so I select the, the goose bite from the left wing of the of the of the bird, and it's the the last two feathers on the tips of the wings that gives you the guest the the, the, the best bites to to use there are some on the on the wings closer to the body but they are not as good as the last two feathers on the tips of the wing so you tie that in and with a with a with a concave side to the top or upwards facing out away from the shank and you grab your hackle pliers and wrap those
and wrap that goose pipe around the, the hook overlapping the wraps and that will form a very nice segmented um, abdomen make sure those wraps are firm and you'll see a very slight taper in that abdomen and you run it around run your thread around before you take the, 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 the hackle pliers off and make sure you trap that goose bite with a few firm wraps before you take the hackle pliers off here we go that little bit we can cut away and we leave the thread right there now next step is to prepare the hackles now I use I use genetic saddles which are very long hackles and that is why I tie them in at this point and not before I tie the the, the goose by it in because it is just a little bit difficult to wrap things behind the the post with these long hackles because you've got to pull them out of the way of the bobbin all the time now the the hackles you prepare by putting both of them on top of each other with the shiny sides to one side and the inside of the hackle to the other so both hackles are on top of each other both with a shiny side on the on the same side and you pull the fibers off the stem so that you've got a few millimeters of clear stem there those two tips you tie in in front of the of the post secure them there with the inside of the hackle facing the the hook shank secure them there then bring them up parallel to the post insides facing the post now and you wind them in against the post so you're going to do some wraps around the stems and the post make sure they they keep on facing uh, uh they, they they keep uh, uh on facing the post with the inside towards the post and you build that up so that the distance you go up along the post is the same distance between the eye of the hook and the post once you've done that you run the thread back down and you stop behind the post and just make one wrap to secure that so now you've got the two feathers pointing upwards along the post and the next step is to do the thorax now for the thorax I use a very fine antron dubbing gray antron dubbing and you just lightly dub the, the thread you don't want it to be too bulky now there, there's also a, a video that I will link on various dubbing techniques and this is a very simple dubbing technique and that's also in the video if you want to go and check that out uh, so you dab that and you're going to wrap that up. some guys like to do the front part in front of the post first I prefer to do the section behind the post first and you wrap that around building up that thorax all the way to where you tied the goose bite off and then back towards the the post and then in front of the post towards the eye of the hook and you wrap that back towards the post again I can add a little bit more dubbing I quite like to 
make a few wraps on the sides of the post as well going one wrap behind one wrap in front one behind one in front just to build that up a little bit against the post now if you're a, a right hand tire like me and you need to wrap these hackles then you're going to wrap them counterclockwise reason for that is because it's easier to tie them off if you're a left hand tire wrap them clockwise so you will see now when i wrap them hold them together you wrap them together they turn with the inside facing up which is what you want because you want those fibers they are they've got a natural curve you want them to curve upwards a little bit and that helps when it comes to tying these hackles off and to whip finish the, the fly so you grab the, the hackles when you start to wrap them they'll turn with it inside up and you just wrap them together make sure they stay together and you wrap those all the way you're going to need about three wraps to there and then you right at the bottom now what you do to um, tie them off these hackles are facing you now on your side of the hook so you just pull them down lift the bobbin up and you wrap make a thread wrap same direction counterclockwise if you're a right hand tire and clockwise when you uh, if you're a, a left hand tire over the abdomen around the post and around the over the hackles so you need about two or three wraps like that to tie them off in that place so makes it very easy to tie them off in the right place and not to trap any of those um, those those hackle fibers and you can trim the hackles away and you tie that fly off right there in the front behind the eye so there you make a nice whip finish behind the eye and you'll see those hackle fibers are pointing slightly or curving slightly upwards which is what you want they're out of the way when you do a whip finish Tight. I'm going to do another one. I like to do two whip finishes on my dry flies. Okay, cut the thread and you cut the post. Don't cut the post too short, it should be about the same length as the hook shank remember you can always go and cut it a little bit shorter you can never add to the post and that is the the parachute atoms now you're going to tie exactly the same tying sequence with different color materials if you tie a parachute kale or a parachute pwo or parachute uh, pale morning done or pale evening done any of those parachute flies it's exactly the same sequence to imitate a a, 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 a mayfly with a parachute style fly it's a very effective fly i'm busy i've, I've already tied about 18 of these and um, uh, preparing for our stag fontaine season where we use these quite extensively and uh, go and tie a bunch uh, try them with the goose bites have a look at the, at the videos on the goose bites and the dubbings and uh, please subscribe to the channel please like the video and please comment Thanks for watching.